On this week's episode, we'll be talking about President Abraham Lincoln's funeral procession that carried his body on a multi-city, multi-state tour so the public could pay their respects before the president was laid to rest in Springfield, Illinois. Our focus then shifts to one of the stops on the president's final journey, Cleveland, Ohio. We'll share with you some details about that stop and introduce you to John Dakin, who was a conductor on one of the trains that carried the president's body across the states. Dakin is buried at Riverside Cemetery in Cleveland and we'll be paying a visit there as well. So please join us on this historic trip back in time as we explore history and relics. Abraham Lincoln was assassinated on April 14, 1865, and what followed would be a series of special events to mourn the death and memorialize the life of the 16th President of the United States. Funeral services, which consisted of a procession and lying in state in the East Room of the White House and the Capitol Rotunda in Washington, D.C., were the first of these events. Following this, funeral trains carried the President's body over 1,650 miles, where it passed through 444 communities in seven states, never exceeding 20 miles an hour. The train departed Washington, D.C. on April 21st at a half past noon. Lincoln's oldest son, Robert Todd, and the remains of Lincoln's younger son, William Wallace, who had died in 1862, were aboard the train bound for Springfield, Illinois. First Lady Mary Todd Lincoln was not present, though, as she was too upset to make the long journey. The funeral trains had nearly echoed the same route that Lincoln had traveled to Washington as president-elect some four years earlier on his way to his first inauguration. The train made several stops in key cities and state capitals for continued processions, sermons, and additional lying in states. Millions of Americans got to view the train along the route and participated in the ceremonies. One such city the funeral train came through was Cleveland, Ohio. The locomotive that pulled the train that carried the president's remains here was called the Old Nashville, owned by the Cleveland, Columbus, and Cincinnati Railroad, and made its way to the Wilson Street Station in Cleveland on April 28, 1865. The president's body was on view in Public Square a short time later. Lincoln's remains rested in a pagoda-style catafalque on Public Square, which allowed local mourners under their umbrellas and dodging raindrops to pay their final respects in two moving lines. This was the only time that Lincoln's body was on view outside. And now speaking of one of the principles of the old Nashville engine that brought President Lincoln's body through Ohio and Cleveland, we now introduce you to John N. Dakin Sr., who was a conductor at the time of Lincoln's funeral procession. John N. Dakin Sr., was born in Gunnerside, Yorkshire, England. He came to America with his parents in 1833, where they settled in Sharon Center, Ohio. He moved on to Cleveland in 1852, where he worked as a stonemason. Just two years later, in 1854, he landed a job as a brakeman for the Cleveland, Columbus, and Cincinnati Railroad. Dakin married Ann Spensley in March of 1856, and within a few months after his marriage, he was promoted to freight conductor, a position he held until September 1st of 1865. It was during this period that he was honored to be a conductor on Abraham Lincoln's funeral train. John made his way to being promoted once again to passenger conductor, and he later retired from the railroad in 1888 after 34 years of service. Dakin was prominent in real estate, 
like his father and grandfather before him, owning property in and around Ohio, Wisconsin, as well as Nebraska. Ever heard of Dakin, Nebraska? Well, land purchased by John in Jefferson County would later be renamed in his honor and remains to this day. John Dakin died by suicide at his home on April 13, 1892, at the age of 62. He and his family are buried in Section 23 at Riverside Cemetery in Cleveland, Ohio, a cemetery for which he was one of the founding trustees of in 1876. Let's take you now to his gravesite. As for President Abraham Lincoln's funeral train, well, it continued on after Cleveland into Columbus on April 29, 1865, and three more cities after that before arriving at Oak Ridge Cemetery in Springfield, Illinois on May 3, 1865, where the president was laid to rest the following day. However, between 1865 and 1901, Lincoln's coffin was moved some 17 times due to fears for the safety of the president's remains, as well as for construction for his final burial tomb. We would like to send a special thanks out to Mark and Jamie at Riverside Cemetery for their great assistance and generosity during our visit there. Be sure to check out their website and Facebook page for more information. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed our program. If you like our content, we ask that you give us a thumbs up, a like, Share with your friends, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell so you always know when our new content is published. And all of this costs nothing but means a lot to us and keeps us growing. You may also leave us a tip if you choose. The address is provided here on your screen, and a link is provided in the description area below. So until next time, everyone, this one is history. Hey, and be sure to check out our eBay store under ID, History, and Relics. We're now featuring channel merchandise, starting with our new logo magnet. They're only $5.50, and net proceeds go towards supporting our channel.